Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Radiant Team Ban. G'day everyone and welcome back here to another third map of Free SL1 Germany. We've got five men taking on Nigma here for an elimination five and a play-in series remaining. as well. Winner of this heads into our playoffs, loser gets out of the tournament. Now Dyer as we get ready for game mate. number three draft, I've got my panel back here once again. Lads, we looked at the uh, the server for this one. Is first picked towards Nigma and then five men picked Radiant. So five men looking more towards the Radiant and obviously Nigma, they want that first pick. Radiant team pick. If it's not banned down, and we'll see how they're going to approach this time on Nigma. If they ban out the Faceless Void, you obviously want to get rid of the GHIO as well. Could that lead into a Batrider in the first phase, potentially coming through? I mean, they could play it on both Mind Control and Weeha, so... Yep. I think Magnus will still be Dyer contested team though, pick. because it's a hero that you can't really afford to ban, because you have to deal with other new that either team plays, mm -hmm. so it's going to be left open. But on top of that, I feel as well that uh, they just have to play their comfort right now because for five men, they play very fast. They play quite strong lane in for and they always rely on Ace to do the hard Ten carry duty. Remaining. But when it comes for Nigma, I feel like their five lineup is easily remaining. executed. Have this faceless forward miracle. Mm -hmm. Honestly, out, boys. I think so. five men can just run back the exact same draft, honestly. And now that they don't have the void, as long as you execute in a similar sort of way, you're just going to get a very Dyer similar outcome. Zeus. I agree. Oh, oh they went okay. back to the Zeus and the opener picks, which is pretty interesting. I do like this because you could tell that he's confident regardless of... And Lena sure wins the lane, and he did a lot of work that game. But in the end of the day, Chessy still farmed amazingly well. And Ten with the early remaining. Axe, pretty much he can combo with uh, Misery very easily. And that's why the Spirit Breaker Five did so much. Seconds remaining. I wonder if they're just going to ban out the Spirit Breaker now. I would, if I was Nygma, right? Like, Radiant Phoenix, if it's a 5, bad. does not want anyone Dyer close to bad. him. It's a Strength Hero with good... Um, yeah, there it goes, right? <laughs> I mean, you guys are really getting in the minds here of Nygma as well as Five Men, and I think this draft is going to pan out pretty much to a T if we're expecting it to go the way that we are. So I'd imagine probably a Spectre Band is going to be coming in here from Nygma, just trying to make sure that Chessie doesn't have anybody to really combo with. As, as you guys Ten said, we did really remaining. well in that mid lane of shutting down Chessie, but he was able to combine with the rest of the heroes that were coming five out from Five seconds just... remaining. One hero that we haven't ban his life still and i think this hero against phoenix against zeus pretty good you got the magnus as well to power Radiant and it's a hero that uh, miracle Dyer does play so bad. i would like to see it banned obviously you can go for that phantom assassin here and you only got one ban left mm -hmm. but the zeus can at least deal phantom assassin until he gets that black king bar yeah and okay five men they're going for the juggernaut so again something that's a bit more early game oriented something that can Ten really benefit from the empower remaining. in a big way maybe just wanting to pick some sort of greedier carry themselves. Five we mentioned the Spectre. I think that would be really good, A, because of the global strat, B, because any sort of healing onto a Spectre who eventually builds into these big mana items, the Scardi, things of that nature. Yeah. Sunray is going to be super effective for the Phoenix, so you've secured your late game if you get to that point. Radiant and I feel like Zeus can shove back. out relatively easily. So then all you need to do is, Radiant I mean, who knows, they might just go back to Zibbe and say, here's another Venomancer, you know? Well, Spectre. And here right. it is. No Spectre the still got banned as well, which is really life. smart. You don't yep. really want to go up against the lifestyle of Spectre because you're just going to get chunked. And Spectre tends to build tanky items, so it's very good for the lifestyle to just be on top of her. It's really good against Phoenix. You don't really care. You can go for that Black King Bar third Ten item or fourth item remaining. as we have hmm. seen before in Lifestyle. Is very smart ban here. Yep. There's not that many Five heroes that look really good. With aggressive timings. That's really what you're looking for, right? Yeah. So right now it's like Phantom Assassin is okay, but there's some timings where it's weak. It's not great until BKB obviously you can kite it as well. Again, Spectre, it's not great either. So it leaves kind of heroes like Terrorblade, which is also terrible against Zeus. Good against Spectre. So you got these opening picks that kind of denies you options, right, as a carry player. And you need to go for certain options to actually beat out the Spectre as well at later stage. And I, I'm really worried for Nigma right now. So right now, nothing really great for them. 
I'm sure this is going to be RMN's hero here, right? You know, this is where they usually pick that extra spot coming in for Enigma. This is probably going to be a mind control Magnus. So are we looking to lean towards something more along the lines of an Oracle here for Enigma, trying to enable... Radiant team. More I mean, Vengeance in the pool. It could just be a Vengeance. It's a Viper. Okay. okay. Choosing to pick up Weeha's hero. I mean, obviously, good counter to the Spectre, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, very comfort lane for him going to go back for, well, it's probably not going to be a Wind Ranger now, so do they need to now switch this Zeus up as to where he's leaning? That's the big issue. See, the thing about Ten Zeus versus remaining. Viper is both of them are going to farm. It yep. doesn't really matter. It just really comes down to that position. Five You're going to be able to get remaining. those roaming rotations. Zeus going to those runes. If Zeus gets lucky and get those arcane runes, those regen it's going to be pretty easy for out the, spe the, the Viper as well as just play the lane. They're lacking a little bit of lockdown. That's my main concern right now. And, you know, who knows? This could be a four uh, Phoenix as well. And you might go a five yeah. that's clockwork they've done a couple of times, but with a Spectre, not fantastic. They've and played Misery with the Lion as well. So yeah. there's something with a little more lockdown that Misery. Wind Ranger play. as well. Granted, like, yes, it's good against the Viper, but it's good against the Viper in lane like, as yeah. another mid. So probably not. The other thing as well to consider is. You mentioned lack of lockdown, but you need that lockdown as well for Enigma to actually keep that Spectre in the Nether Toxin. And mm. one full staff will just negate Rubik's Lift. It's going to negate the RP. So right now, there is a bit of lack of lockdown from both sides. It just comes down to who's going to be able to execute the early game and transition to the later stage. And who has the advantage of the later stage? And I'm wondering who picked for Enigma as a carry option here. Because sure, you got that Viper that's going to be pretty deal and a way to deal the later stages, but we've seen it a few times now where the spec just gets past those weakness phases when he gets like three items, the Scotty included as the third item, and the Viper, you just can't keep him there with the Nether Toxin and it just out snowballs, you just can't kill him anymore. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, like there's still the potential of something like a really want to take it to the late game, but then what does the Magnus really do, right? Like it's not going to be empowering anything to that cleave potential. So I'm um, feeling like Luna, I guess, is still in the pool, which is kind of aggressive and is going to be able to take it to Spectre a little bit. You can hit the egg and still have the glaives bouncing around, which is Dire nice, I suppose. Pick. But I don't know. I'm not feeling super confident. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Venge Luna against Spectres either. Yeah, it's yeah. just can't utilize your range effectively against Haunt to begin with, and Zeus can do damage regardless from the back line. I do like the Sand King pick here. It's going to deny some of the carry options. Obviously, you, don't, you definitely remaining. don't want to go Terrorblade here. You can't lane. You can't play it for the later stages. Five seconds remaining. Phantom Assassin. There's still that possibility that they go Phantom Assassin here. But it's very reliant on actually playing well in the lane phase. Because if you don't bully out the Sanking, it's going to get to the point where you're going to have to jungle. If you jungle, you're going to have to deal with the Sanking just... Towers alive mm -hmm. with the Sandstorm as well, just pushing out all the way up to your tier two. They can combo with the Aghanims of the Zeus later on, like they did it with the Spirit Breaker before. Ah, uh, it's pretty rough here. Just looking for. Could we see maybe an audible Dyer coming in from Nigma and they play a little bit faster with something like an Sven, Ursa? Sven. Okay, so they're gonna yeah. go for the Superman. I was thinking maybe go for something like a Sven, but. They can't really be cut out all that much. Especially once he picks up the Ags, right? You can get on top of this Zeus very easily. If that Superman does connect with the Zeus, he's basically going to get two sh Yeah. So it's going to get to a situation remaining. where, you know, if they can provide enough space for this vent, he gets two, three items, Aghanims, BKB, remaining. plus one. Yeah. He's going to be pretty I scary. have faith in Chessie, though. He my has been concern. on point with this position. Yeah, my main concern here is they're relying on the Sven Ags a lot right now. There's no one who can start fights unless this Magnus has a really good time and gets that early Blink Dagger. And you don't really want a Magnus to start fights as well. Radiant you want him to be the one back. seeing, judging the, the situation and getting that RP when he sees like two heroes at least clumping up. So do you then think it's something like a five clock? Pair together with this? If you play a position five clock, then you have a clock Sven yeah. into Sandstorm and a Phoenix remaining. there, which is really bad. I'm just thinking of any sort of initiation, right? Five that we could potentially have remaining. a meeting. Like, the other option is, is just ditching the idea of having mind control and Magnus, just mm. setting this Magnus as a position 5 and just play the recovery mode with yeah. the Sven Magnus. And it's suffer a little bit in the lane, but you can just rely on the jungle later on and allow mind control play a more aggressive uh, hero that can actually start fights for them. And then that way, Ten it'll be a lot easier for the Sven remaining. to actually play the mid to later stages of the game. So, so what are you thinking about in that mindset? Like a remaining. Broodmaster or something like that? Something that's going to be well against Spectre, and preferably some sort of... Centaur, then? Like that? 
Mm -hmm. A little bit of something. I would have liked the Dark Seer. Enables Radiant them a little bit. Obviously, it doesn't give them that team fight initiation yeah, until he gets like flag, uh, blink ags or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't mind Dark Seer all that much, actually. That's why I'm the smart Dire one, team pick. I mean, they're <laughs> taking away the, uh, the Venomancer again. Undying, huh? Yeah. Iron Man Hero, he's been playing it a little bit. Gives him a little bit of lane emphasis. But lads, I'd imagine this is Iron Man's hero. I would hate to see a position 5 mag. I feel like they would get punished for the grief. Ten seconds Something remaining. like Disruptor, Oracle. I want to see Snapfire for Nick. Snapfire? Okay. Five seconds I want to go remaining. For the, leave the Magnus 5, because you know that lane's going to lose this like lane. You use your position 3 to actually get an edge. So I'm control Snapfire. <laughs> Awesome. Radiant team pick. Try and get an early ag. So what are they going to pick doctor. up here? They're going to go with the witch doctor. He played it well. I'll be honest. Yeah, he like, did. Yeah. He had very good impact, especially with the maledicts in the later stages against the spectre. Maledict is very strong in this game against these heroes. They can abuse that quite a lot, especially with something like a viper. Who sometimes when people do get away from uh, the wee, uh, the wee Heart viper, they are on. Ten a... seconds remaining. It's funny how both teams have left the last pick for their position. Five last seconds year, remaining. Which well, is uh, potentially the Phoenix. Potentially, it yeah, could be misery that possibility. Phoenix. But right now, you know the lanes here. You can do sanking with the Phoenix here. That's going to do pretty well against the Ven, and you can play a position five. That's going to do very well against the uh, Magnus Ruby. If you had a lot of pressure off Spectre, obviously the strong laning heroes are gone. Nature, okay. Oh, Pilot die. Nature's prof. Uh, uh, a lot of tempo, a lot of... Uh, I don't know, they, they've thrown it around a little bit. I'm, I'm going to wait until we see who's actually yeah, playing Yeah, Chess what. is going to be playing the niches here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ooh. So, so taking a little bit more aggressive, obviously not Zeus? wanting to land the Zeus in. Yeah, poor Zeus. Seems like the... Five Zeus. five Zeus! All right. Pi, you are exceeding my expectations, my friend. You are really going above and beyond with these position <laughs> fives right now. I'm impressed. You know, Pilo Dai, as, as they said in the interview, he used to be coined as one of the best players in the world, so before he even started playing Dota. So let's see if he can uh, continue that trend here, lads. But what are we thinking? These drafts, you guys are a bit iffy, a bit wishy-washy. Yeah. Matt's been pretty garbage when it comes to prediction. All right, let's see if you he can predict last first one. and I'll go opposite. For the Nigma <laughs> ones, I have been garbage. Yes. Overall, have. I've been pretty good. Just yes. tell me your prediction. Yep. 10 <sighs> seconds remaining. Come on, Matt. I need a name. I'll just be the opposite. So. Five seconds. Well, so, uh, I'm going to go five, man. I would hate to see them bow out of the tournament off a game two like that where they just did. All right, Nygma then. You're going to go with Nygma? I'm going to go opposite. All right, so it seems like everybody here is just going to try and go the opposite way to see what Matt is doing because most of the time he's wrong here. So if that is the case, then Nygma will be taking this game number three. So we're going to leave our casters one more time. It's going to be our boys. It's going to be Gareth and the cop. Yeah, thanks guys. Here we are. Game three draft all done and dusted. Lacoste, the panel have been cursing teams left and right. So it's <laughs> nice to see they're going to go for a bit of a spread there and go 50-50 to see what's actually going to happen. Are you leaning one way or another here for game three? I like how Nigma drafted. I think they're playing their comfortable heroes. GH and Rubik, always pleasure to watch. Uh, Mind Control also had a great performance in the previous game. Miha on his signature hero. They will have break against the Spectre, so no one needs to get that Silver Edge. It's a very costly item, but still feels like a very easy to execute lineup coming out from Nigma, I would say. But uh, also, I don't think five men can recover from what happened in game number two. I think that was a huge loss for them where they lost the first Roshan, did not pick up Aegis, and it got into their heads. Yeah, I was I was looking for a segue there between you know going for the break against Spectre and having their will broken by oh, the okay. Spectre in that game too. <laughs> and uh, Ace unfortunately leaving the Aegis inside the pit and allowing Prepare Nygma to have a pretty battle. spectacular comeback to tie things up one apiece. As we get ourselves into game three of this series, it is do or die, as we like to say, as one of these teams will be leaving the tournament after a loss here. Tells leading stage proper misery phoenix heading up towards the top we've got a chessy prophet there in towards the mid lane and that's moved pilai die onto this support zeus with zibe the sand king ace on that specter once again down in the bottom lane on team nigma gh you mentioned the rubik they've got all their comfort heroes rmn with a maledict on that witch doctor super handy against the specter miracle sven we on the viper and mind control he's going to be up top on the magnus in fact so a lot of lane swaps from team nigma yeah, I think they swapped their lanes accordingly in game number two, which gave Faces Void to have a great time in the laning stage. Uh, also, 
mind control got much more than he would on that bottom lane allowing him to get like bottle mana boots the classic thunder stuff that you buy on your off lane magnus and to go for a blink dagger and so good timing on a blink dagger even though he was playing the mid lane which we usually don't see on mid magnuses yeah no echo saber or anything like that blink into pipe into selling the pipe the for boot to travel begins. to tp to finish the game i suspect uh, get scouted out <sighs> But he's already sitting behind his tier one, safe and sound. Enigma, not going to be giving up on this though. They are prepping for an aggressive move with that Dire Observer Ward scouting Ace perfectly. He's now stranded between tier one and tier two. So they start with a stun, Sven's in. Maledict there and a lift from GH drags him away from the tree line. He's trying to escape with the Maledict on him though. He's ticking, he's dropping. Will he die though? Oh, he's going to be like fine. He's fine, 20 HP left. Yep. But a sad start for Spectre. Pilot well, has healing salve, but they might zone him out. It, it's also a spell that you don't want to have on your position for Rubik uh, telekinesis. Uh, if they got a kill there, it's worth it. But right now, like you need to leech XP and try to get yourself to level two. Yeah, they're keeping the tri lane down there as well. So it's going to be a much slower level two for GH. Blocking up that camp rmn coming in from the side ace zero cs completely zoned out of the lane and they're gonna go for pilo die here it looks like don't get the connection with the telekinesis he does wander himself through the trees ace is actually able to manage to grab a large portion of that creep wave and drag it around but he's being chased down by two supports Ace playing position four right now. Wrong. Ace is not having a good time, is he? That is some really, really sad stuff. Spectre doesn't even keep the creep wave on her. So they're going to meet back up on the bottom lane where Sven is holding lane equilibrium just outside of his tier one. A lot of focus on this bot lane, but that's, you know, Nigma's game plan. Shut down Ace Spectre. Force the TP from Zeus to come back to his tier one. I don't think Zeus can do that much. It's the position five Zeus with very low mana, also not having lightning bolt. Instead, he has arc lightning, and now they are putting some extra heroes on the bottom lane. And they feel the need to bring misery down here. Phoenix is level two. The, the creep wave just being held so far up. Very kind of high tide situation here. And we'll push. There's no side camp for them to pull the creeps. So at least Ace will get some XP. Still sitting at zero CS. Yikes. And quickly looking into the other lanes, Viper dominating mid lane, doubling up the CS of Chessie's Prophet, who has already been forced to TP back home several times just to uh, get away from these poison attacks from Viper. So Wee's having a crack in time mid lane. Oh, they cast bottom. They catch him mid dive. Misery can't escape now. He's been tapped by the Maledict. Oh, and Miracle's <laughs> going to get the first blood for himself. Oh, he's waiting so the Maledict doesn't steal it. Is that what Miracle was doing? Yeah. Clever boy. Ace got two CS, three CS. This oh. is actually hype. Four. Four. Oh, can you get a fifth one? They're going to deny the creeps. Oh, Miracle with a big deny on the tower. Stuns him. Make sure he doesn't get that range creep. Or five CS Lacoste. When you're in this kind of position, you can't allow yourself to miss any of the last hits, the free ones. Yeah, you know, every little helps. And Paladai not helping. Paladai also Arc helps. Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're gonna go on him. Casks on Maledic there, lift him, drag back, and whack him away. Spectre, forced to pop the stick. I think. She's Might fine. just be all right. Miracle taking Region a lot of damage, though. In. They stack the stuns. Ben and Rubik, they did not know who's gonna go first. Mid lane working really well for Viper. That's why I was worried about this Nature's Prophet pick, where he doesn't really pressure the Viper. And with just one point in Nether Toxin, these Treants don't do that much. Like, you're gonna be pushing out the waves constantly. How's Top doing? Mind Control, Decent CS, 16 1. Zibe, 25 and 11 Zibbe, the biggest winner of the laning stage so far. Zeus dropping low. I'm your god too. And there he goes. 
bottom lane. There's some catastrophic disaster level stuff now for five men. And up towards the top, it looks like Misery was diving to look for the courier. Doesn't find it. Like you're mentioning, sanking up against a melee hero with Caustic and the Burrow Strike. He's able to do just fine up there. But every lane is a is a win or at least a draw here for Team Nigma. That should help. I like how Misery shot on the bottom lane, attack. gave away a kill, and then like screw it, guys. I'm not needing anything more on the bottom. Good luck to you. I'll just deal with them a bit later. Nature's Prophet, once he hits level six with the Rat of Nature, they should try to make an aggressive move on the side lane. Well, they're trying to pick off GH bottom. Pilot Eye out of mana, though. Can't go for the finish. I'll I'm just that. wondering, uh, you know, uh, what's what's the reason, do you reckon, that five men didn't swap their lanes? You know, why not move Ace up to top, walk him up there? They could, but you need to walk. You can't really TP because uh, they will do the same thing. Even if they, you know, TP him to the top lane, he'll still get like one, two, oh. three CS uh, while they're TPing Zeus. Uh, oh, bye bye, bye bye, bye. Oh. Miracles there, helped out by RMN to secure the kill. Paladai does his job though, gives away his life, so Ace may survive. Stay on the lane to get that solo experience and maybe a little bit more farm. We in the mid lane, hasted, chasing, in onto Chessy. Sprout is there as he throws the Viper Strike in. Chessy very low, but doesn't Dyer's get the kill. We out of mana. Maybe could have mangoed and wandered there to get some more poison attacks. A couple of stuns thrown onto Spectre. Damage returned in kind though, with a dagger and now the lightning coming through from Zeus. If Nature's Prophet had one more CS, Rat of Nature would be available and they would definitely get at least one kill on the bottom lane. Right, if not two. Well, that would have been super close. Now, I'm interested to see where we goes. Dominated his lane. Gone back to the fountain to read den, and here we go. TP's bottom. We might start to see the Viper chasing Spectre around the map now to really shut Ace out of this map. Because Wee's arrival with a Stormhammer stun, catching out Ace with really nowhere to run. He's got to try and get back to the trees, but he's been slowed and taken out. Gone for 20 seconds. I am surprised they... No one's tipping anyone. No. After that mistake in the previous game, now Ace is... I mean, he only died once, but uh, they managed to hold his CS. He did not get a single last hit for like three, four minutes. Isn't it bugged or like removed from lobbies or something? I feel I feel like no one's been tipping at all because it's not in the game anymore. I, I, I'm not sure. We can do some testing, tip each other. Sounds good. We're probably going to talk about it, and at the end of the game, we're going to forget about it and not do it. This like is... everything we ever say, we'll test that after the game, and then we completely forget. Oh, DD rune for Wii now. Jesse's still sticking around mid, trying to gather up the little bits and crumbs of farm he can find. And that's all that Nigma are giving them. Five men just looking for crumbs. Sankings farming jungle to allow Phoenix to maybe get closer to level six at the top lane. Profit under a dire observer ward here. Perfectly Radiant's scouted by Team Nygma. Wrapping around with both Witch Doctor and the Rubik. But Chessy feels it coming. Or does he? Stuck around. Now he's a little bit more Radiant tentative about moving forward. Fortified. 4-0 start. Net worth lead, though, actually, in the hands of five men. Sand King and Prophet both doing exceptionally well. And now Pylite dying. Oh, gets the ward denied under his nose. Something like that pause fight. Oh, jumping up top. Trying to find that we wipe mid cat. as well. RMN with GH gonna get closed off here by Jesse. Great Sprout blocks them out, and RMN is gonna be a double kill for Jesse. Looking for the triple. Can they finish off GH? There's no help from Sven or Magnus, and Ace Spectre is gonna close the gap with a dagger for the final hit from Jesse to get the triple. And now Profit back in the game. This is exactly what they needed. They needed Nature's Prophet to land a big threat of nature, and then they start playing aggressively. They got three kills. They also 
brought Zibe because he's super far right now and he should be the one making some moves around the map. Well, they find Misery top again with his rotation. Gets him a kill. And Mind Control was playing that top lane on very low HP for the past couple of minutes. Baiting that Phoenix to stay around. Which Doctor? Well, that would be a tribute. No reveal. So Zibe inside that sandstorm. <laughs> Fine. Until maybe he walks into the Viper. Zibe does have the backup of Chessy, the Sprout Wii. He doesn't have any way to cut through the trees. So Sunray and Epicenter and Wii completely isolated from the rest of his team. He's a little bit tanky, but there's enough heroes here from five men to clear him up. He's gonna get oh, is Misery gonna actually. die? He gets the trade. I saw Zeus buying the Thome, but if you have Phoenix in your own team, who's level five, I think you need to give Thome to Phoenix. Like your position five, you're eventually gonna get uh, the levels. The only thing that matters for you is to get level six, and it's very oh, important catch. that your Phoenix get more levels. Good catch on the top, as you mentioned. And also I want to see Sanking just getting up straight up Blink Dagger in this game because they lack initiation and they also need some time for Spectre to recover. So you want to be creating space for your team. Big stack for Sanking. Radiance middle tower oh, is under attack. He's already halfway towards that blink as well. But a catapult towards you mid tier one is a problem that needs addressing. And it's a Rubik. We'll take that level three sandstorm. Gladly hold out on this mid lane if need be. But while all this is happening, you know, while Sanking's farming, Prophet's getting triple kills, and a lot of focus here has been around that Viper and his rotations where he heads. As the big old of strength thinks Sven, who is in the jungle and gathering up neutral items to drop at the same time as he clears through the ancient camp. And his net worth now starts to skyrocket. If you're Radiant a cord, awesome. you pick up Trusty Shovel and don't use it for the first time, you know, you're not doing it correctly. So you need to be greedy. <laughs> Well, top lane, Telekinesis into Sandstorm, Chessie hit by the Maledict and dropping low, but the turnaround play from Zipbe and Pylai die. They were waiting in the wings, just ready to strike. And eight, the second horn of the game yet again, allowing five men to come into the fight Radiant's with a numbers advantage. Under attack. Got a good couple of kills there. It doesn't feel like five men are holding on anymore. It feels like they're actually building up enough strength to fight against Nigma. Yeah, they're playing Dota. They're making moves around the map. Uh, Nature's Prophet getting closer to Orchid. Once they get that, there is no counterplay. There's not a single ability that can dispel it. Uh, no one's got to buy like Manta style. Sven might get like second item BKB in this game, but they have a lot of kill potential. That's why I would love to see Sankin getting a Blink Dagger instead of what he's tower. doing he's right now. Attack. I think he's going for straight up Hood just to tank things up. But if he gets a Blink Dagger, he does have that instant initiation and can play with Tenacious Prophet. For now, he's just letting Spectre Radiant's farm. Tower is Zeus attack. show on that wave. Come into mid. Yet again, hold out, but the Rod of Aatox reveal there from Viper. And a bit of a aggressive move by Zibbe to TP so far forward is going to be hit for with his life. His Radiant's dominating tower, streak removed, the tier two cleared up, and Nigma now in a much more dominant position. My. Easy tier one tower and the pick off on Sanky. Radiant's big oh, under attack. Oh. Yeah, they're Dyer's trying to go on GH, but they don't get the body attack. blocks. Tree and spawn just behind the Rubik, and Witch Doctor TPing here on half HP. Risky maneuver. Trying to close the gap onto Pylite Eye. Looks like Magnus cancelling his TP as he thought about heading up to top. The Rod of Atos down bottom does catch Misery, but he will TP out of here as quickly as he possibly can. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Now it's the systematic play from Nigma. They got the tier one mid before the tier one bottom lane, which is a little, a little unusual, but they'll come through Radiant and top all the dominoes down one by one regardless. And that opens things up for Sven to you know, be farming much, much more neutral camps Radiant's down in the Radiant Jungle. GAs are trying to make another move with Nature's Prophet, but it's not enough. He 
has Boro Strike, can get out of the Sprout if not silenced. Also holding two Tangos against the Nation's Prophet. We also see position fours and fives, buying the Crawling Blade, but this is also a thing you can do. Dyer's top tower. Trying to get him onto Zippy. They've got Sven TP. Telekinesis under the sentry, and now the Stormhammer landing. Got strength there, but the Burrow Strike out. You've been talking about it. Zippe's got this escape mechanism every day of the week. More of that. that wasn't even close. That was not nope. even 10% of the kill. Bag will finish his Blink Dagger in a second. A fitting bounty. A bounty in which my matriarch will And then we should see some smokes come out from Team Nygma. Already have one on the Witch Doctor ready to play with. GH can quite happily just stay up top lane. It's all been very calm for Ace after that initial laning stage disaster. Back into his blade mail, farming ancients very quickly with it, as we've seen from these factors. Maxed out dispersion and dagger. And a TP top of the Thunder God's Wrath onto GH they go. Silence the Rubik and pick him off. A dominating streak for Chessy now, 4-0-3 after being dominated in lane by the Viper. Pretty standard stuff, you know, global presence. Sandra doesn't even have boots. Well, this time the Sand King doesn't escape. They even RP him there to make sure he dies. He tried his darndest to burrow out and sandstorm away, but preemptive sentries sees a bit there. Illusion. Uh, who, who doesn't have boots? Radiance bottom Misery. tower is under attack. Trade up into Meteor Hammer. Just wants to, you know, play this type of a game where he's on a different side of the map, uh, maybe die, fish for any kind of information, and clear the whole creep wave with the meteor hammer because he's lacking levels. He's even got an arcane ring queued up. Not sure where he's gonna find that. Maybe it seems like Spylai Dai stole everything from Misery in this game. Tome, arcane ring, you name it. <laughs> Radiant Misery has become the position five now. Partly Die has had a taste for farm and he likes it. Back to... Death away from that mid lane as Weehar was definitely eyeing up a target there and waiting for his squad to back him up. Bottom lane. Like the Zeus is just going to be clearing out these waves, making sure it's not a free tier two. Enigma do start gathering and converging down there around the Sven. So it comes. Five men. Sand King with a horn to scout and the TP forward finds the Viper. We turn to the rod of Atos down to half HP already. Kind of stuck in this sat storm and the supernova is there and no one can touch it. The Viper is being annihilated by this Sand King and they've got a bonus kill as well. All the way off to the right hand side they've taken down Player Light Dying but the Sven needs help. He's got damage, but he doesn't have control. Now trapped inside the Sprout, he's being burnt down by the Sun Ray. Pops out his hand of Midas onto one of the treants, but Miracle's in a spot of bother here. He's gonna try and turn and nearly kills off Chessy, to be fair. Dodging the shock wave, well played by the Prophet. Very out close of close battle as they do jump in. Mind control gets the Chessy Prophet. You bitch should get a kill on Witch Doctor, but does not want to chase, he was afraid. Climb up hill, there is no vision. The Rubik respawn, so he says, I'm not gonna go for it. Regeneration! Both of these teams really respecting each other's strengths. And it feels like we now with three deaths in a row. Starting to lose a bit of that mojo, loses momentum. Rod of Atos into pipe for the Viper. So he's gonna get a bit tankier. He's been out in the open. Five men very good at exploiting that. But it might be a good time now for Nygma, knowing that Haunt is down, Supernova's you know, not available for another 30 seconds. Potentially here with this Blink RP ready for mind control. They can go and make a move off the back of a smoke. BKB ready in 150 gold. I think it's time for them to make a smoke play as you suggested. But I don't see anyone holding. A smoke at the moment. Which doctor has one in backpack, but RMN is, uh, he's not swapping it in or anything. They are just bodyguarding Sven. Viper holding out in the mid lane. There's a lot of room here. Profit to shove out top, get his BKB. 
The Rod of Atos catches Pilo in the middle. Zeus trying to make his retreat as safely as he can to the high ground. Dyer's structures are fortified. Tanking at the moment, nine slotted, actually ten slotted, bring a blink dagger, needs to get rid of a couple of the items. Blink dagger is ready, so that means it's going to be much easier for him to make a good initiation. You don't necessarily Dyer's need to go in and attack. use the epicenter, but most of the time is under attack. your job is to blink dagger in, and just borrow strike, try to reset and go for the epicenter Bouncy. after that. Try and line up your ravages. top tower is under attack. Well, here is that move from Nigma. They are all bottom, wanting that tier two. Sentry on the edge, but Zibe in a very good position Radiant in the trees here. We'll keep the sandstorm going. Uh, potentially, Dyer's Nigma think about the dive. There top. it is, the blink RP. Can't check the Sand King. They need the chain stuns, and my goodness, do they have them? <laughs> under God's wrath, it's gonna be used by Pilot Die. Not entirely sure for what reason. <laughs> Just asserting dominance. If you Radiance attack us, we will use this ulti. <laughs> Tit for tat. You kill our Sand King, we'll do a bit of damage to you. And that's a 3v tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Same goes for the top. Uh, it wasn't a freebie top. GH was, I don't know, a fraction of a second away from denying it. The right click was uh, very close as Misery gets hit by the Rod of Atos, but Chessy with Ace. They both arrive with a Haunt and a TP. There's Global Presence onto Wing. Good body, Viper. Boy. See ya, buddy. And now the Invis rune for my control, but he's dusted up. They still do see him. Trying to track back behind the Tier 1 tower, You're and they've sec. revealed him. He was back, but Ace is taken with him. Gets the double kill as five men. Now the BKB from Chessy shown off. Silencing our men as they come in to defend their team on mid with only a couple of heroes. It's time to go Roche, but don't uh, remember, actually remember to pick up the Aegis this time. Don't remember. <laughs> don't remember to pick That's up the That's what happened in game number two. It sure is. So let's pay close attention here. Roshan is at 4,000, 3,000 HP. He's about to die, and he's going to drop an item. They don't need to right now, guys. Is it in? He actually put the players in, in instead of picking Someone has to pick it. it. Oh. It's ready. What course is it in yet? It, it is. Very good. Powerful move by Ace, picking up the Aegis, and they've already killed off the Ace. Good start on the Sand King. Onto the Sven from the Sand King, but he turns with his God Strength, whacks into Zebe and clears him up. The bug is down. A Spectre on the retreat. The BKB God Strength of Sven is a sight to behold. They're still trying to catch up to her, but Ace is pretty speedy in the Shadow Amulet there, revealed by the Dust. Pilai Die. He's going to get cleared up here by Wee from the low ground. Enigma defending inside their own jungle. Yeah, Ace with Aegis in this one, level 16, he's super tanky, and even if Viper or Sven try to attack them, there's gonna be some blade mail return damage, and uh, if he pops it, he's also extremely tanky. Uh, whenever I see Viper against Spectre, most of the time I see Spectres trying to build a BKB, just to tank things up and have a way of not getting affected by that Nether Toxin. But uh, this will also do, might consider getting uh, BKB a bit after. They still have abilities, you know, that go through magic immunity. You have Viper Strike, uh, you have Mag's RP. Oh, Nigma finally getting some use out of these smokes. RMN with the Holy Locket Rush. Getting into Glimmer Cape next. We's gonna TP to Outpost. They saw Chessy pushing top gonna make his way into the trees i don't think they saw all they did they pinged him they know where he is so the skewer there and chessy bkb is gonna get cancelled out by the rp they're coming in with the damage the horns flying out in comes ace looking to battle gh chessy's still alive cut it through the trees he's dusted he's running he's sprinting away miracle will finally turn his life but ace is going wild onto we now the academic scepter for miracle gets him on top of the spectre obstacle strength and takes around the fight Five men, what have they got left? Well, Sandy's been chopped into pieces! Slain where he stands. And the Maldi's on to Ace will make short work of the Spectre. There's no Supernova, no Zeus, and nothing left for five men to give. Down to one man now, as four of them are all dead. It's gonna be so much harder for them 
to take a fight. Sven just hit level 20, minus five seconds on a storm hammer. I can see Ice Frog, you know, singing his office in a Seattle, rubbing his Radiant hands, saying, My finest creation. Attack. Taste the Sven with the Agadim Scepter. Yeah, feel the power of these talents. They're just so good. And five men. Do you think they were Radiant forced there to fight spot. around the Nature's Prophet? Was it a call from Chancy saying, Hey, come and battle with me? <laughs> yeah. Nice. They could have just left Jesse and uh, choose a better fight now that you see how the fight actually ended. And Spectre, like she melts. If she's inside the Nether Toxin and they can keep her inside the Tarot of Atos and all these stuns, Radiant's might even consider going back attack. to that BKB. But then again, Radiant who's going to take care of Sven? This is a problem with this uh, type of a matchup where you want to itemize against the Viper, but you also need to itemize against the carry you're playing against. Yeah, you can't rely on Chessy sprouting him all the time in every fight either. Even though this Prophet's had a pretty good game, Sven has had an even better one. 19,000 net worth over on Mir Miracle right now is absolutely huge. Monumental performance from him. 8, 1, and 5, looking pretty good. All thanks to that early try lane where they safeguarded his farm from the very get-go and they jump and skewer misery gets caught out does he have a chance to dive he's walled up the death walls out and the supernova's forced storm hammer the four man's done beautiful ravage from zibe in comes the problem with the mdkb so he is all stunned up now he turns it into that storm hammer they go with the rp from mind control just as george says the barrage drop making a triple kill come through from their door and in they go they want the rampage they want the team they give it to Miracle, come on, Ace. Where is it? There's no ages over in the rush, but you can't go pick that up from game two. It's not there anymore. No, you can't. What a toss in comes Sven, and the rampage comes. Looks like a very promising fight, uh, Zibe. Landing a four man burrow strike with the sandstorm, but there was no real follow up. They also don't have anything that goes through magic immunity, so Sven can do whatever he wants in these team fights. He also built a silver edge, so there's another way to break the specter. Good luck, Spectre. 40 second phase to respawn. Gonna need all the luck he can get. And this game starting to feel like a foregone conclusion, honestly. 8k net worth leading up Enigma. As they do start to really accelerate in this mid game. We can see it back. As Ace just gets hounded, chased down by this Sven. And of Midas. Very nice. Keep that efficiency going, Miracle. He's, he's, he's on the offensive here. Look at him go. Who's he going to fall? Oh, Zippe, is it? Hello. Where's the reveal? Dust from mind control. For a strike by a second of respite. And he's going to have to BKB here, maybe, Miracle. It's the Haunt arriving. BKB turn a fight, and he blows up Misery. He's still alive. Save. Got it. What you want? Right? Red, do they have a reveal? Oh, they do see him. He does finally die. And now the Death Ward down as they try and focus down Ace. The Spectre's in trouble. Drag him back into the Nether Toxin. The pings come out and Ace is down. They get one kill. Five men. They remove Miracle. But the price they pay is substantial. Once again, they almost got full team wipe just for killing the Miracle there. Who got the last hit? Uh, Ace actually did. So attack. that's the best outcome for them, actually. It's going to be an easy two tower. Like the item progression coming up from Sanking is not existent. He had such a great start, then bought a hood. Now he's going to blink dagger and just a casual plate mail. Radiant's like they need has their fallen. blink daggers. They need Lotus Orbs against Sven. The dispel talent is insanely good. Can't Glimmer Cape, can't Dyer's Yule Scepter. Not sure why killed. that's in the game, but. Dyer's <laughs> courier has been killed. It's pretty broken. Yeah, oh, yeah, these couriers me. get sniped out. Chessy making every sneaky little play and move that he's got Dyer in his book. Zeus doing a pretty good job trying to keep the ward coverage. And observers limited here. There's the vision from Nigma. It does extend over into the radiant side of the map. There is Pilo die just dewarding quickly. Oh, or not. He's a bit scared, a bit spooky. 
Good blink away from Sanking. Gets him away from the Viper's Rod of Atos. Things are stalled here. Spectre. 8,000 net worth oh, behind the Sven. The damage. I had to do the maths like several... Oh, Pilot Eye. Pilot Eye. Oh, he's Glimmer Cape. But they can see him. They're diving tier three. Enigma getting the target they want. And they've got four heroes here to defend Mind Control as well. Even if he gets Sprouted, I think he's just fine anyway. While Sven... Sven with a double damage rune. Oh, Ace, where are you going? Oh, can you hide in the trees? Right. Uh, he's not going to find him. But look at the itemization on Enigma's heroes. You have Witch Doctor with the Glimmer Cape and the Holy Rocket, Voodoo Restoration, maxed out. You have... Guardian so Grease on dying. Mag. Like, you have the Holy Trinity of the items. You have Pipe, you have Guardian Greaves. He been just deleted from the game. Yeah, they chased him a little bit. There was some good juicy from the second king, but they've also found the Spectre. RMN and Mind Control are trying to pair up together, but they've kind of copped that one up. The Skewer takes him away from the Death Ward, and now the Haunt with Amanda style allows Ace a little bit of a retreat, but he's got having issues. He went low ground and back to high ground, and that's allowed Enigma to catch up again. Skewer back into the Nether Toxin, and that's him done. Dead for 75 with buyback, but without Haunt. Spectre did not buy a new item for 10 minutes. At the moment, she's saving 4,000 gold. Now, Enigma will not on your tier 3 towers. There's just Haunt. That's not knocking Lacoste, that's a battering ram as Sven diving for the Zeus, kills him off by the tier 4, the supernova is finished off. And every teamfight ulti ability or whatever you got for 5 men is just going down the drain. Nice stun, blink initiation, Sanking's in with the Thunder God's Wrath, and Sven just whacks him down into the grave of 6 feet under. Jesse does TP forward, but Sven is still battling here, the skewer back in, and I think 5 men are just done. They can't fight into this. Spectre's chasing forward. Sanking wants to blink stun. He wants to spend oh, so badly, but Sven, he jumps to low ground with a storm hammer. And Zippy, he's stuck here now. Viper, another Witch Doctor, and the Sven, available. they've got another stun to come as the dust no is reveal. not there. No reveal. Zippy, two man stun, but it's not enough damage. They've got the Rod of Atos, and there's Miracle continuing his mega kill streak. Dyer's top Dead Guardian Greaves keeping them alive for a very long time, providing them extra region, extra armor. And the Witch Doctor, man, Holy Locket is actually a decent item on a Witch Doctor. Sometimes if you get enough farm, even on Undying. Another casual double damage on Sven, who just hit Radiant level 25. Are under attack. Yeah, super casual. Backdoor regen, what's that? No idea, mate. Just gonna hit these buildings. Radiant Crumble some structures, to be honest. Fall. Entire lane demolished. As Team Negma head down south, Radiant's no moon. buyback on Santa or Phoenix. Profit has one, but he's respawning in 10 attack. seconds. Radiant's and you'll be wanting to utilize fortified. everything you've got at once, with that horn coming back up around the same time as the Furion respawns. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. It might just be one team fight left in the tank here Radiant's for five men. And they've got some tools to use, though. Supernova level 2, back up. Thunder God's Wrath ready in 20 seconds. Radiant's bottom. Two set of Raxes. Gone. And that's a fake smoke. A fake smoke? I thought they're gonna use a fake smoke and come back, try to get a pick off on one of the targets that does not have a buyback and, uh, you know, just end the game. Sven right now is pretty massive. Even gets the Quickening Charm instead of the Mind Breaker to lower the cooldown on the stun. But uh, while all this was happening, top lane got demolished by Tenacious Prophet uh, before he beat it out, the catapult, the couple of treatment. Oh, GH they're using so trouble. much on GH. Forest Strike's gonna be there. Just about. Yeah. That was a little close for comfort, but Zibe, he's on the money regardless. Yeah, top lane, barracks falling, at least it's something for five minutes. Can't wait to see what will happen. GH with a snappy buyback there. Zeus has already TP'd away. Won't find him. What they will find, though, is Roshan, because he's alive again. Okay, let's check the Stormhammer cooldown. 4.3 seconds with Rakane and Quicken Charm. 
Radiant are scanning. Who's he going to find? Chatty, be careful, buddy. Don't go down those steps. There are scary people down there. Yeah, he'll TP top. A deep observer ward. Farm some jungle caps. They see him, though. Star observer ward sees exactly where he is. They ping it out. It could have been an easy rush for them, but they wanted to get a pick off first. Two set of Raxes, and uh, this is go. the smoke. It will enter the base from the lane that they already killed. Oh, this is huge. Can they find... Oh, they see a sentry place down. Sven wants to go in. The Sand King is going to dodge it with a blink away. And now Miracle. Where's his BKB? He pops it a little late. Half HP for the RP. There's Mind Control taking out Pilot Dies. Chessie does get hit by the big old Malady. Massive AoE circle. And Sven is still holding on to Satanic. Gets hit by the Meteor Hammer, though. In comes the Chainsaws. No! Tipping is lifted. GA saves the day. So now Miracle can turn and play Dota 2 as he'll cleave through Bibi and look for the Supernova now. The Egg is gone and five Stranded with only two heroes alive, skewers back, chess and profit, and this is all they have left, the only lonely Spectre. And I even she won't last very long. There it is, double G's dropped in the old chat. Good performance, good showing from Nygma. I think what happened in game number one really affected five men and the way they played game number three. Yeah, I get game two for sure, definitely. Uh, an issue for their morale and stuff like that as Nigma showing that they